to talk about infrastructure. Um, if we go into the first slide there, um, so the, again, if you look at what the concept designs uh, looked at, we can see that uh, they indicated that smart local energy systems are likely to be multi-vector with multiple energy networks providing end user services throughout the area. Um, so most projects include the use of two or more networks. Uh, generally, uh, how it builds up is you start with electricity, then you might include some heat networks, and on top of that, you might include hydrogen networks. Um, however, how these networks were used varied significantly from the business as usual approach we see today. Um, so by using platforms to manage local generation and demands, the energy networks become much more integrated. For, for example, uh, heat pumps of various types feeding into heat networks or electrolysis producing local green hydrogen. Um, and so it's a uh, yeah they're both physically and as part of the um, kind of the modelling that we saw in the concepts they're economically integrated as well. The, the amount of focus on infrastructure varied across the projects. Uh, infrastructure is one of those um, aspects where it's easy to assume that it's going to be there, um, but all of, but all of the projects acknowledge it through either building new networks such as heat networks. Um, or reinforcing existing networks, kind of, kind of acknowledging that they, they will need uh, reinforcement given the new demands. Um, given these are near-term designs, no, uh, in the concepts at least, no hydrogen repurposing was, was proposed, although uh, some domestic gas boilers were proposed uh, to maintain usage, leaving the option open in the future. And some kind of, some kind of mentioned uh, hydrogen as a possibility in the long, long term. Placing value on minimising network constraints was the other way that projects re uh, recognise the uh, value of infrastructure in the area, and so and and the in particular the mitigating or mitigation of reinforcement. So generally, electricity networks, since they're the most expensive to reinforce, um, they're the ones that we really focused on. Um, often, this would be through utilising storage, including the embedded storage within within heat networks. Some smart local energy system concepts placed new operational requirements on, on networks, and these will need to be overcome through regulatory and technical change before this smart local energy system can probably, probably be realised. However, despite the recognised potential value areas in network reinforcement mitigation, at this stage of the design, only, only two of those um, concepts, smart local energy systems, included network operators in their project team, which was, uh, which was interesting. And so if we go to the next slide, um, so a few of the challenges, so when it comes to infrastructure, smart local energy systems face similar challenges to any other decarbonising energy system really. Uh, so I mean, infrastructure typically has a longer life than most of the assets that, that you, you think about, but also comes with um, sizeable uh, upfront investment costs. So smart local energy systems proposing the integration of a heat network will need to identify investment for that network, just as any other um, energy uh, system will, proposing a heat network will need to do that. But and those pro proposing rapid charging infrastructure would also need to justify the added res resulting investment in, in uh, managing those demands. However, in theory, smart local energy systems, uh, when operated correctly, would be able to mitigate these costs to a greater extent than the counterfactual decarbonised non-smart local energy system, using control systems and platforms to minimise those peak demands. Uh, a second infrastructure challenge that smart local energy systems have in common with uh, the decarbonising energy systems is the choice of decarbonisation strategies and the associated infrastructure required to support it. The decarbonisation strategy uh, will often have substantial infrastructure costs that are either directly recovered from consumers in the local area or socialised. For early small local energy systems, the relation, the relation to neighbouring areas and national strategies is relatively unimportant. But if we take a view from kind of the system, the whole system perspective, um, the wider deployment of smart local energy systems will, will require coordination and integration with neighbouring and wider energy systems in order to minimise uh, whole system infrastructure costs that will eventually en end up uh, being paid for by the consumer, most likely. So without this coordination and, in, uh, and integration, there is a risk that, um, that those networks might become a bit higher. So on to the next slide, please. So infrastructure 
is inherently both local and national. Um, we need it in our local areas to to meet our peak demands from our from our home, from the feeder down our down our street, right up until suitable transmission infrastructure across multiple vectors. So ESC generally take a whole system um, multi scale approach to representation of of infrastructure. So I just wanted to introduce you to a couple of the the um, the areas of work that we do that relate to smart local energy systems. So local area energy planning uh, develops uh, local energy strategies that can cost effectively meet local demands, synthesizing networks across multiple vectors. Local area energy planning can help to understand how a smart local energy system fits into other local activities and the overall needs and targets of a local area. If you're interested, you might want to read the report released today called Local Area Energy Planning, uh, The Method, um, which is released as part of the proposals Ofgem has set out to deliver greener and fairer energy systems for consumers at a local level. Uh, taking a step back, the infrastructure transitions analysis model takes uh, national least cost energy system designs uh, and translate them, translates them into local and regional infrastructure requirements. Through this, uh, smart local energy system can see how energy, the energy strategy of the wider region may evolve, um, which is particularly important when facing a business case on, for example, revenue from local flexibility markets. Um, and on to the next slide, please. And finally, a few observations from the uh, delivered concept projects on, on infrastructure as a whole. Um, although value is frequently attributed to deferring network reinforcement, uh, the size of the value is currently unclear. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult to do um, and quantifying this value would, would provide evidence that the value of smart local en energy systems can provide to both the local networks and also the wider energy system. Um, there, are, there is work ongoing in that area um, already. Um, engaging with local uh, distri distribution network operators adds value to the outcomes of a project. So smart local energy systems often have the aim of supporting local uh, DNOs to manage their constraints. Engaging DNOs early will support the apportioning of value to stakeholders throughout the smart local energy system by understanding how much value DNOs uh, place on procuring support to maintain their networks. Lastly, it's important when developing smart local energy systems to recognise <clears throat> the infrastructure implications of defined demands, even if the infrastructure may not be directly paid for by the smart local energy system project. How can we ensure that we make the SLES system future proof uh, addendum, making natural gas, CHP and hydrogen ready, for example? Alex, over to you. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a tricky question to answer, and I hopefully I addressed a little bit addressed it a little bit in my uh, in, in my talk just there. And so I think what you want to do is you want to look towards whole energy system strategies and what how we feel the whole energy system might evolve. So there are various uncertainties in the energy system, whether that be um, the, the use of hydrogen within distribution networks, or whether that be the efficiencies of carbon capture and storage. And what we want to do is we want to understand how those uncertainties um, have potential effects on different local areas. And so you're never going to be able to predict the future and you're never going to know whether um, your area is definitely going to um, uh, get, say, a local, uh, a local hydrogen di distribution system. But what we can do is understand how likely that might be and what are the characteristics of your area that might make it, make it suitable for, uh, for different technologies. So in answer to the question, in, in summary, you would want to understand how your area fits within a wider energy system and understand how, um, uh, how likely your area is to be, in, uh, to be uh, kind of used for the different technologies that you're looking to um, make resi become resilient to, if that makes sense. Sarah, would you like to comment on how we ensure that SLED systems are future proof? Um, um, sure. Um, I think with, with future proofing, um, often that means if you don't think the market will deliver because investments required before, you know, there's, there's interest in viable business models, regulation is necessary. Um, and there are examples um, in, in the energy and power sector as well as, you know, other sectors I imagine that we could draw from. Um, but, but one of the examples that just immediately came to mind is European legislation that's recently been brought out with the Energy Performance Buildings Directive. 
and the um, the the sort of um, cabling and the ducting that needs to be put into new buildings or um, when a, an existing building is retrofitted so it's ready for EVs to, to be charged, um, you know, to, to be able to connect. So um, so it's that sort of thing. I think regulation plays quite an important role in with respect to future proofing. Why wouldn't a smart local energy system aim to develop technologies that remove the need to rely on and pay for energy from the national grid? Um, well, it sounds uh, it sounds good uh, when you're first thinking about think about it that you don't you can supply your own energy and consume your, your own energy. But uh, the more the, the the more the demand that you connect to a single network, the more resilient you are to changes. Um, by accounting for diversity. So by aiming to isolate from the wider network, uh, a smart local energy system would need to invest in enough redundancy and peaking capacity to manage a, a, very, a kind of extreme weather period for like a one in 10 or one in 20 peak period, which then tends to get pretty expensive and you tend to underutilize the assets that you invested in. So um, generally, yeah, you'd expect a smart local energy system to have some kind of interaction with the, with the wider energy system.